All right, you and I, Willie. Welcome back to Prepper Now. Let's talk about global conflict. Uh, <laughs> Commander Cameron Yeast, commanding officer of the Arleigh Burke class guided missile destroyer USS John S. McCain, recently photographed shooting an M, excuse me, a 556 45 millimeter M4 carbine. But the problem is that the optics were installed backwards. Picture is the guy has got a scope on backwards. So um, they've got pictures of how to properly use the scope, but this guy is, uh, he's got it on backwards. And basically what the title is, it says, uh, we're going to lose a major war. I think they're right. So, of course, they deleted this image, you know, because, uh, you know, you, you don't want it floating around. But people were mocking this guy. This is uh, March 25th, 2024. And anybody with any basic knowledge, um, you know, would know that uh, this thing is, is not on correctly. <laughs> so, oh, I love Borg. Just got off a, a, a live stream six minutes ago with 145 people, but there's only eight people here. Sure. We're going to lose a major war, Dr. Chioda said on X. How could this have passed muster by any Navy personnel? Another person put scope backwards, foregrip in an almost totally unusable position. Entirely ridiculous. My six-year-old grandson knows better than this. And any six-year-old grandson worth his salt, uh, yeah, would know that. So, uh, yeah, that's <laughs> one person said another DEI genius. Only thing missing is his skirt and heels. <laughs> God, that is rough. So he's just basically showing how the U.S. Navy is unprepared to fight the next fight, and I think we are. I think that's the problem. Um, we've got... Uh, so many other priorities in front of, you know, what should be being done. You know, worrying about, uh, you know, we're going to have a, a a lesbian communist, you know, in charge of our, our military. That's like their big concern, you know, because that's, that's the most important thing uh, compared to, uh, you know, having actually functional human beings that are mentally okay to handle these weapons. And not just handle them, but know how they work and how to properly function with them. So, uh, as one guy said, he said, all the militaries in the world are laughing their asses off. They really are. How could you be afraid of that? You know, you see all this wussification of all of our military and all these other groupings. I mean, yeah, we've got great technology, don't get me wrong, but... Uh, Anyway, I mean, we all know that uh, navies are basically obsolete at this point anyway, so um, everything else is going to be going to artificial intelligence and drones and, and you know, robo-terminators. That's where everything's going to go, so, yep. Yep, so there it is, folks. Uh, we are, uh, we're, we're in a, a, a bit of a problem. Uh, we are, uh, yeah. uh, I, I mean, the whole world is, you know, first of all, okay, let's go back to the crisis report. Let's, let's talk about the, the messaging. <clears throat> messaging was that um, we're not going to, you know, we, we're going to let Iran do its thing. We're going to sit back. We're not going to jump in, right? But we all know that now um, they said, well, we're going to come in and, and, and help them. You know, whatever. I forget the exact term he said. Uh, but we are, we are going to help them. and We might even do joint strikes. That's what he said, right? So um, <laughs> the, our military and our entire government is all over the place. I mean, they're the most discombobulated disorganized uh, group of, of pud whackers I've ever seen in my entire life. 
Uh, it's 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 not even it's not even a joke anymore. Like you, it's you know you can ridicule it, but it's it's absolutely pathetic. What what these people call leadership and everything else, organization. How do you let a freaking picture of you with a scope on backwards as your official post? Like how do you do that? And that's what these inane, you know, idiots are. As they sit there and they they worry about how many colors they can put onto a flag and and everything else and all this other just social engineering crap. So, uh, truthful troll, yeah. This they, don't worry, man. I'm gonna get some some doomy. Um, yeah, it's uh, so truthful troll says the economy is so bad right now. I wanted to divert from the uh, the uh, economy. I, I put out a video earlier today on this channel, and for some reason they think it's like uh, it, it shouldn't be talked about. Like they demonetized it and basically said uh, um, this is this is a uh, sensitive material. So I guess talking about how Gen Z, you know, one in three is basically not working. Evidently, that's sensitive material. But you know what? When you look at the uh, when you look at the economy, when you look at the, you know, all the stuff going on, yeah, it is sensitive material. Our, our economy sucks. Straight up. And it's this craphead uh, administration that's doing it. You know, this isn't, this isn't like rocket science here. I mean, what do you think what Joe means? He says the middle out. He's not saying like, you know, expand us out into new territories. He means he wants us gone. That's what Joe wants. He doesn't, he doesn't want us around. So anyway, I, I just, it's, 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 uh, it's frustrating to see. So yeah, um, I wanted to talk about uh, the military stuff because I just got onto it. So, I mean, we're going to possibly be joining uh, Israel and in, in striking out. Let me go look that up. Let me see. Because I was in a flurry. Tonight. Let's see uh, where we're at with this whole global war thing. Let me get him a man, Aquila. He says, uh, let's see. Uh, three sons killed of Ismail Hania. I mean, that guy, if your three sons were killed, like, would you, would you cry? I'm like, I would probably cry. This guy, like, they tell him, and he's like, oh, okay. All of them? And their grandchildren, too. Oh, okay. Oh, that's literally how it reacts. You should see it. I don't know. I, I would show what's known as emotion. But anyway, um, let me see if... Here we go. Iranian strike on Israel termed imminent. Uh, Lufthansa Airlines suspended all airlines to Tehran. Blinken and Turkish foreign minister are currently scheduled to hold an unscheduled call in attempts to dissuade Iran. Israel has communicated to the U.S. that any direct attack will trigger an immediate response. Flights over Kuzhestan, Iran, halted for an indefinite period of time. The U.S. says if Iran launches a direct attack on Israel, they will not hesitate to help intercept the missiles. Quote, we do not rule out launching joint retaliatory strikes with Israel. Um, oh, that's right. Ironclad was the word. He said, we're, we are, we are uh, ironclad and our, our devout, I guess APAC called him up and reminded Joe who exactly has the, uh, the money. CENTCOM placed on alert to counter any Iranian response. Iranian retaliation could come within the next 24, 48 hours. Lufthansa suspending flights to and from Tehran. Iran sends a new communication to the U.S. via a third party stating clearly that if the U.S. intervene in favor of Israel, it will also make the U.S. a viable target. That happened about an hour ago. Marco Rubio says that Israel is facing the threat of imminent attack directly from Iran in a combination with coordinated attacks by Hezbollah, Houthis, and Iranian proxies. Biden must stop the harsh criticism and be pro-American de- and, and only pro-American democracy in the region. And, yeah, so support for 
And I'm CENTCOM commander, General Carrilla, expected to go to Israel tomorrow. He's probably there now. Coordinate around a possible attack. And additional countries are mulling to shut down their flights to Iran amid escalating posture in the Middle East. So besides Lufthansa, that's a bit of a problem. Uh, that looks like a potential no-fly zone, whatever that might look like. So that's where we are. Let's have a global conflict, right? So, um, I mean, it's just inmates running the prison, basically. So uh, very unimpressive people running our country right now and doing their best to get us into some form of a world war. Uh, you, did you guys know that there was a... Uh, a nuclear bomb drill in a major arena in New Jersey yesterday. And they're getting the National Guard there to practice effectively um, the, the, what it would look like if there was a, uh, a nuclear bomb and there was a, an arena filled with people. This is 2024. So, I don't know. Um, I can tell you this. I mean, right now, if you're not stocking uh, a lot of stuff and getting ready for going without, I, I'd say uh, you're you're rolling the dice. My wife and I are, are making bread. There's something wrong with her bread. She's it's too dense. I got to get to the prepper people. Uh, she's got the uh, thing going, but for some reason, the the sourdough isn't rising. Uh, the right way, or it's not baking the right way. It's just really hard and dry. I guess that's the best way to put it. It's good. Tastes like sourdough, but it's uh, it's just hard and dry. So anybody want to put in the comments uh, what you can consider to do? Uh, I would love to hear it because we're really getting into bread baking, as you should too. And the reason why is because <laughs> it's just on the precipice of global conflict. Yeah. I mean... <sighs> Anybody worried about their grandchildren or children? You know, one person said he didn't expect um, a draft. He thought that maybe it was just rhetoric or if they did, he said, you know, anybody self-respecting should keep their children out of it. I mean, what does that look like? And then you've got this thing from Elon Musk saying that uh, within a year, um, artificial intelligence is uh, going to overtake us in intelligence. What, is, what does the world look like then? Seriously. So, said so warm kitchen to rise and pan of water at the oven while cooking. Okay. Thank you, Redneck Prepper. I will tell her that. So, warm kitchen to rise and pan of water at the oven, or in the oven when cooking. All right, that's a good idea. All right, I see what you're going for there. All right. Yeah, humidity. I guess that's what it is. Thank you. You guys are awesome. That's why I come here. Uh, you know, we're, I'm not perfect. I'm not a perfect prepper. I can, I got a crap load of stuff stocked up, but, you know, you got to also learn the skills. You know, you can have all the, the flour in the world if you know how to make freaking bread. You're, you're kind of screwed, which we've made bread before. We're just, we're trying to do sourdough. Sourdough is very different. Sourdough is, uh, there's a, a mother and there are, uh, uh, um, like, a, it's, you got to do it a certain way. So it's very different. Anyway. Uh, I don't know. I mean, a lot of people think that, that, that we're pretty much close. This is, this is about it, that we're going. I mean, I don't, I don't know what else to say. I mean, you've got basically no reason for Israel and Iran to talk anymore. They clearly have killed all the hostages, or at least Hamas has. And now it's like, well, you know, what do they do? What, what, what is the talking point? What are they negotiating over? Because I can tell you right now, I mean, the, the people that had family and loved ones taken in Israel, they are uh, out for blood. They're pissed off. And so, uh, you know, like I said on, on Crisis Report, it's strange now because it went from being um, Hamas, Israel, now it's Iran, Israel. 
you notice that changeover? It's it's gone from from being like this Gaza people and this you know force trying to fight back and all that. Now it's literally two sovereign nations that supposedly have nuclear weapons. Kind of a problem there if you think about it. I don't know. I don't know. So we're uh, we're concerned. I'm concerned. The world is in a um, in a really, really strange place right now. So, oh man. Uh, so let's let's go on and let's talk about this uh, this inflation thing. There's, that's the next thing. I always say it. You know, the uh, worry is. Um, you know, we worry about war, but the real thing that's going to hit us is going to be inflation. It's going to be the problems with the, the uh, economy. So, you know, you, you see this going on. You hear 3.5%, you know, the, the real estate sector got its teeth kicked in today. Uh, you know, and then, of course, the, the other problem is, is that Joe and the, the Democrats, they're wanting to win an election, so they're going to do anything they can, um, even if that means outright lying, which you should expect, to get back in there. And that's that's kind of the problem. Uh, it says, uh, we're reaching the, a point where high inflation is bound to still be in voters' minds when they head to the polls regardless of how the price figures come in over the summer. So, well, I mean, we do we do year-round voting now. So, you know, basically at some point, everybody's going to figure that out, that uh, they're, they're unhappy with the, um, the inflation. Uh, Truthful Troll is correct. The dollar is pretty much worthless. I was going through and uh, looking at my, uh, my precious... And, you know, I had it for a long time and a long time. I got ridiculed. My wife, you know, why do you have that? Blah, blah, blah. It just sits there. It does nothing. Yeah. And now here we are. It is, it's kicking butt and taking names. So, yeah. Peter says, uh, a guy making $25 an hour can't afford an apartment in a car to get to work. I was talking to my students today. I said, you know, uh, what do you think, what do you think is going to happen with all this? You know, the, the economy and all that. I said, you know, you go out in the real world, guys, and, uh, you know, because they've got no clue. They, they think that uh, making $200 a week is like some grand winnings. I'm like, man, um, I'm showing them around our, our local area how much, all the rent is. And these are places that five years ago were, you know, $500 for a, a one bedroom studio apartment. Now it's 1100. You can't live there. $1,100. I mean, all right. So you make $20 an hour to which you keep about 14, we'll say. So $14 an hour. That means you got to make work basically 50 hours a week. And that will put you so your rent is in that sweet spot of about a third of your income. But then you look at everything else. I mean, the energy prices in our area have gone up. That's what I've noticed with us. Uh, our bills used to be 100, 150. Now they're 200, 250 with our energy. So, I mean, like, what, what is... And, and the other problem is it's going to keep going up. That's, that's the other issue. This is not like going to stop. This isn't going to just stop. It's going to keep going. And in fact, there are some people that think that it might even get to hyperinflation, me being one of them. So I, I don't... Uh, I was talking to another student about the, the Great Depression. I said, what brought uh, people out of the Great Depression? He said, well, you know, I said, the, the wars. You know, I said, yeah, you know, World War II. Uh, was the thing that got it going. So if we have all this terrible economy going on, what do you think their their next step is to, to make it right? Take it to war. 
And the other sad thing is they don't even understand what conscription is. They don't, they don't know that uh, not too long ago, uh, their great-grandfathers were getting conscripted into the Army, Navy, Air Force, Marines to go to a distant, distant country to fight a war they didn't understand or have any clue why they were there. And it's going to happen again. It's going to happen again. War is coming, folks. It is. So um, it doesn't have to be, but it's a racket, like Smedley Butler said. They got to keep the racket rolling. They got to keep it going. They got to they got to get people on board with the racket. Get the uh, the cannon fodder ready to be that next generation. The other thing is, is that these Gen Z kids, man, they're not stupid. They they know they're getting a screw job. They do. They know that uh, what they're being offered, what they're being able to um, have, and hold on to and in the jobs that they've got going on and, and, you know, the ability for employment is nowhere near what their ancestors, you know, their, their grandfathers and fathers had. They know that they're not stupid. So there's a real element of this generation to be like WTF. What's the point? Seriously. I mean, there's a lot of them. They're like, I don't care. I don't, I don't, uh, if I'm going to work myself to death, I might as well live my life and be free. I get it. I was, I was, you know, out there. Um, I, I was a freewheeling 20 year old, but the problem is, is that eventually, you know, I was telling this one student cause he said, you know, I'm going to work on my hands and, and I want to do this and like that. And I said, the problem is, man, is that, and what your people your age don't understand is that you age. You can't do what you did at 25 at 50. I'm living proof. Now, I'm still really well put together. I can still do a lot of things and all that, but I can't do what I was doing at 25. So, you know, they're going to go out there and live that life and do whatever and Hopefully they'll find some way to make themselves a living. But the problem is, is that uh, there's not that many options. And also you take artificial intelligence and you throw it in there. What are all these jobs going to look like? What is, what is education going to look like if they've got uh, artificial intelligence teachers? What is doctoring going to look like when you can put uh, all the symptoms into a machine and it'll spit out exactly uh, what, what's going on? You know, people say they want that human touch. They want that human care, but I mean, what's that look like if, uh, you know, because what people think is like, oh, well, they're always going to be doctors. Um, no, there's businesses and businesses want to save money. And the easiest way for a business to save money is to get rid of people. You're seeing it happen right now. So if you're running a major healthcare corporation, you're, are you going to sit there and employ a fleet of doctors and nurses and whatnot no you'll get enough to get by but you're going to have you know your ai computers and stuff to sit there and diagnose and fill in prescriptions and everything else you know i uh watch my wife do it every day that's what she does and uh what she does can be replaced with artificial intelligence unfortunately you know she's very good she's very human she's very caring and she gets out a lot of what, uh, you know, a, a, a report machine box, whatever it would be. Uh, she gets it out of them, but, um, you know, all things changing, you know. That's why I almost think that, you know, doing something like electrician and HVAC and all that, like that's, that's the wise choice to go because it really wouldn't be a good, you know, it's not easy to replace those jobs with robots and stuff. You know, you need to be nimble. You need to know your stuff. You need to know, you know, when you need an Allen wrench and when you need a Phillips, you know, that kind of stuff. Not that they couldn't figure it out, but still, you know, a, a really good electrician, a really good HVAC, a really good uh, whatever trade, plumber, they're worth this, you know, they're worth it. You have a problem, they come in, they look at it, been there, done that, fixed it, look at it right away and uh, and fix it up. I had a problem with my chair today. I'm not real good with fixing, but I, I can do enough. And uh, it basically was starting to, to break. 
and, and my job. And they had another chair that was back there with all those like, you know, other parts, these other things, these wasted, you know, tables and ends and chairs and whatnot in this kind of uh, like area where they're getting ready to, to get rid of it. So went back there, found another piece, unscrewed the thing, got the right Allen wrench, tightened it up and took uh, two broken chairs and made one that was, uh, that's worth it. That's uh, functional. So. I don't know. Uh, there's a lot of things that are going to be replaced with this AI stuff. And I don't think our next generation really have any kind of a clue what it's going to look like, what, what we're going to look like on the other side of things. Uh, I don't know. And then there's the nefarious side that says, uh, you know, that, that I think that there are a group of people out there that are like, you know what, we don't need this many people anymore. We've got robots and machines and AI and everything. And so, yeah, not so big of a deal if uh, people aren't as nutritious as they used to be or if there was, a, you know, a bout with some form of a sickness or whatever. It's just nature working itself out, right, folks? So we're going through changes, and that's why conflict is another portion of it. Global conflict is, uh, it's here, basically. Now we just need the, uh, the official kickoff. We need a tiny mustache man going into Poland. We need uh, the Kaiser sending his troops, that kind of thing. We're just right on the precipice, and uh, it's, it's going to happen at some point in the not-so-distant future. So, I don't know. Uh, world kind of stinks right now <laughs> it sucks too because like i've got kids i've got you know children and, and kids that i educate and you know you want to be helpful you want to make them think they're going to be able to change the world and and do stuff but you're like sitting there reading these articles about you know ai from elon musk and you're like one year dude he's like yeah one year AI is going to be smarter than humans. Yep. Oh, man. Let's go into that one real quick. Smarter than the smartest human. That's what he says. Which, basically, when I read these kind of things, it means to me that it's already happened. You know what I mean? That's, that's what I see. It's, uh, it's already happened. So, wide-ranging interview. X said suffered uh, multiple technology glitches. Um, basically, said uh, if you define AGI, artificial general intelligence, as smarter than the smartest human, I think it's probably next year, within two years, uh, when asked about the timeline for development of AGI. He also co-founded OpenAI, said a, a lack of advanced chips was hampering the training of Grok's version 2 model. Musk founded XAI last year as a challenger to OpenAI. I use ChatGPT, folks. I do. And the reason why is not because I'm, I'm looking to, you know, support the beast or anything like that. But I think if this stuff is going to be out there, I might as well learn to use it. And to be honest with you, it's actually made my job easier. It really has. Now I can take stuff and instead of going and getting some liberal version of it, I can take uh, what I want and I can turn it into questions and worksheets and answers and everything else and have uh, entire uh, examinations created from them. You have to go through and read it and make sure it's okay, but... Instead so of me sitting there manually piecing things together, I don't have to do that anymore. I show my mother. Mother was a teacher for 40 years. I said, watch. I took an excerpt from the uh, American Air Force, and I put it in. I said, create 10 questions with uh, multiple choice answers at a uh, you know 12th grade reading level. And you know, give me vocabulary as well. Sure enough. Four page thing pops out everything I need, all the, all the, and, and, and with answers. 
So I could take this, go into my job now, and what used to take me an hour or two to do, to perfect, now I can do it in 15 minutes. And that's a small sample. That's a small sample of where this is going. So we're in a strange time, folks. I don't know. Maybe all this uh, solar eclipse stuff was a, a sign. Maybe it was a sign to get your house in order. It's kind of, I mean, honestly, I'll, I'll tell you the truth. I said this the other night. It's kind of what I, I took it as. I know it was going to be the apocalypse, you know. I, I didn't think there would be craziness in the skies and, you know, blue beams on my shoulder. But I knew, uh, I knew the, the, where we're going as a species is changing we're we're going into uncharted waters and it's going to be incredibly interesting to watch it and be around and to see it uh you know i'm 50 years old i can't believe that i feel like i'm 30. uh and i know if i could stay healthy and i stick around that living to 120 is not a not outside the realm now, I don't know if I want to. <laughs> There's a lot of things in this uh, this planet that really anger me, but uh, at that point, I'll probably just want to live in some strange, distant place with a lot of beautiful nature around me and with people I care about. That's about it. But anyway, we are uh, we're in a strange place. The people that are running the show are psychopaths, and they're trying their best to get us into. Uh, some form of a uh, deconstruction. And then from there, who knows? Who knows? So. I do plan on going seeing the CW movie, Truthful Troll. I do. So. But, yeah. We're, uh, we're in interesting times. So. But that's why we're here. We're all preppers, right? It's that strange survival mode in the back of our brain that says stack more food learn this try to make a skill you know try to try to do this try to get better at this go hit the gym after work every day to get get stronger and healthier and you know cut out the sugar and yada 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 all that stuff that's all survival mode so we're supposed to be here that's why we don't give up because well what's coming down the pike we're going to need strong men and women Right, folks? So hopefully you're working on all that stuff. You're strong and healthy, and I appreciate you. So I'm going to cut it off on that one. i got to get to bed and wake up in about six and a half hours. But I don't know about you. I feel better. So that's why we turn on the lights and come here and talk into a microphone. With a uh, Full disclosure, my headphone set is Sonic the Hedgehog from my child. <laughs> It works. Works perfectly. Anyway. All right. We're going to cut that off right there. I got to go to bed. God bless you all. I really appreciate you. Uh, check out the links in the description. Hit that like button. Do all the things. And, uh, yeah. Keep uh, keep rolling, folks. Keep doing what you're supposed to be doing. And Keep prepping. Prepping out. <laughs>